and on today's adventure we find ourselves in Amish country look at we have a horse and buggy going by us here and they are all over there's another one coming up which I'm going to be passing here in just a moment and look at that good old-fashioned horse and buggy well, it is another beautiful day here in Iowa, and we have come across a covered wagon. I wonder if that's going to have something to do with today's adventure. Well, hello there, and welcome to another beautiful day for an adventure here in Burr Oak, Iowa. I am in front of the Burr Oak Savings Bank, which is also the Laura Ingalls Wilder Visitor Center and Museum. This is where the tour starts. We are going to check out a hotel across the street, which is where the Ingalls family lived for just a few short months. This was in between one of the times that they lived in Walnut Grove, Minnesota, and the other time they lived in Walnut Grove, Minnesota. And so we'll just kind of find out what they have to offer here today. This should be really fun. If you are brand new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. This should be fun, you guys. Welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels! <laughs> so come on with me, let's go see what there is to see. This is the hotel that we are going to be touring today, Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum. This is where they stayed for just a few short months. It should be kind of interesting to see what's inside of these doors. And so this is the second Laura Ingalls Wilder location that we have visited on Tommy Travels. The first one was right here in Pepin, Wisconsin, her birth home. That's the Little House in the Big Woods book. And by the way, the lake that's right near here is called Lake Pepin, and it is also the birthplace of water skiing. And then if you travel a little bit south, you'll find Burr Oak, Iowa, which is where we are at today. This is a cool looking building though. It just reminds you of the Old West. <laughs> Out front they have this little photo op for the kids to stick their little heads in in front of the Masters Hotel, which is the location we are going to be touring here in just a moment. And they've got the whole family, Ma and Pa and Laura, the whole Ingalls family. And here's a look inside of the bank where it's actually a gift shop where you can get books. They've got all sorts of decorations. Come home to Little House and some Little House on the Prairie apparel. All sorts of cool little things and look at this picture having a good time in the home getting down to some music and this is a bank building and now we get to walk right into the vault holy cow look at that these old deposit boxes safe deposit boxes from way back in the day these are probably the ones that came with this actual bank too look at this number 58 Oh, that's heavy metal too. That is solid iron. <laughs> and then some cute figurines from Little House on the Prairie. I think that is Pa over there in the background looking over things. And there's Ma and I believe that is Laura Ingalls Wilder herself. And here's the history of the Burr Oak Savings Bank. It started off as a barber shop from the 1930s to the 1970s. And there's a guy getting his hair cut. <laughs> Looks like a good job. There's the building. It was a post office from the 50s to the 70s. And then there was a bank restoration process from 1999 to 2004. And it's time to go on the tour. And there's a look at that vault. Let's see what we have else. We're going to take a look to a hotel now. So they lived in this building? Correct, for two or three months. Oh. I don't know where they lived in here. Laura doesn't say for sure where they lived in here. She just said that they lived in here, so yeah. Hmm. And then to stay here, um, board, 
Lodging per night was 25 cents, three or more, no more than three in a bed. Hmm. They slept crossways in the bed. Eating 25 cents, so there was a restaurant downstairs where they served breakfast, dinner, and supper. Uh, liquor was six and a four cents. I think the idea was that you would purchase at least four shots of liquor. Um, wine, 25 cents a gallon. Oats for a horse, one cent per gallon. And then oats, horses stable for free. And like I said, there would have been a barn just north of here. And this building was built in 1851. There's a picture of it up here. Uh, before the road was graded out here. You could uh, walk up onto the porch or step up onto the porch. And then down here on the bottom, this is around 1973 when two school teachers, a librarian, and a businessman purchased the building for $1,500. And uh, you can see it's sagging here. The addition was put on in 1896. They removed that so you can kind of see what the structure would look like. Um, they had to put in cement block. Um, there was stone quarry that was put in here. And Laura talks about a quarry just being across the road here. So maybe that's where they had gotten the quarry stone originally for the basement. And then she taught at a, three different schools. And the second school, she took a test and she decided she wanted to get a second grade certificate. So she did. She did well on, on the test. And then um, this is Laura now Manzel's daughter, Rose. And she was the one that taught Laura into writing her autobiography. And then she also tried to get it published. They wouldn't publish it. So then um, Laura used it as a draft, and she wrote her children's books. And then Rose did the audit, um, not the audit team, but she went through and helped Rose um, or Laura put it together. And then the town is called Baroque, and it's named after a, a grove of trees that grew northwest of here. And the fruit of the tree is uh, the acorn with the burr on it. And then there's an original letter there by Laura. Um, if you were a child back, oh, let's say in the 30s, 40s, 50s, or whatever, um, and you wrote her a letter, she would write you back, a beautiful cursive uh, hmm. writing. And then when she, I believe she got in her either her 70s or 80s, a Harper's, Harper Brothers came out with a, what they call a form letter, called a bed key. There's a picture of one here. We don't really have one. Um, but they would tighten the ropes up because they would sag. And then there's an old saying, sleep tight, don't let the bugs bite. And if you had, like there's straw in here, and you put uh, the straw in here, you didn't have control of what bugs were in there. So sleep tight, tighten the ropes at night, and then don't let the bugs bite. And then later on, bed bugs and regular mattresses came out. Mm -hmm. Laura doesn't mention chamber pots or outhouses in her children's books. She probably figured children knew what they were already, but that's what would have been in here when she was here. Kerosene lamps, uh, pitchers and basins to wash in, and in the DVD, it showed a, a well out here in the front, with a hand pump. She said they got the water out of a spring out back here that runs year round. Um, so that's where they got the hotel water. And then um, they found this bison robe in the Bisbee house. So when they tore that down around 1974, don't know who it belonged to, but you can touch it if you want to. Very wooly, heavy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then uh, these uh, money, money purses here, men could wear those. Uh, you, you're a salesman and you're traveling to come to a strange town, you want to hide your money so you could wear a money belt. And then suspenders over here for men to wear, um, power wore suspenders. Um, pretty comfortable to wear, you don't have to wear a belt. Those, are, those come from the Philadelphia Centennial uh, Exposition back in 1876. And then we have some lye soap here. Um, you could use that for doing your laundry, your dishes, taking a bath. Um, we also have a straight edge razor. Men would use those to, to shave and they would hone them on a razor strap. And then uh, they could put, oh, I was told, lye soap in here and then you make a nice foam and then it would soften your beard and you could shave. And then these are hand clippers. I read, did some research, this one says 1926, but they were made back in the 1800s, these hand clippers. They put the hair, they didn't have electricity, and then the brush to get the hair off the shoulders. And uh, these are interesting, collar stays. And I did find a shirt in here that doesn't have a collar, but they would wear these collar stays and then uh, cuff stays. And there's pictures of some men here with uh, collar stays on and you could wear a tie with it, so pretty neat. They not look very comfortable, they'll look like they're kind of tight around the neck. And there's a picture of uh, Pa Mop here. This is the parlor that we're walking into. And then there's a picture of Pa Mop here. And Ma's hands, if you look at them, they're very arthritic looking and knobby looking. Um, and she's just in her mid 40s. You look at Pa's hands, they're very large, and he could span Ma's waist with his hands when they were first married. Kind of an interesting picture. It was after that long winter when they had all those blizzards. Those are Laura's virtues on the wall here. 
And then there really was a Reverend Alden. And then this man lived here before Laura did, George Payne Bent. He wrote a book about Baroque here. And um, his father had started the Congregational Church. And this man lived here before Laura did. And then, um, but Mom and Pa joined the Congregational Church while they were here. But his book is very interesting. It has a lot of pictures of the hotel and the schoolhouse that Mary and Laura would have attended. A lot of buildings that would have been here when she was here. And then he had a factory in Chicago where he built these George Payne Bent pump organs. And his name is right down here. And then this organ won't work unless you pedal it. But it still works fairly well. Anybody wants to try it again? <laughs> Got a good sound to it? No, no, no. <laughs> I'll try is, it. Okay, and this is Pa's favorite song, The Sweet By and By. And it was written the same year Laura was born in 1867. So Step down on these things? Yep. yep. You gotta keep pedaling like you're pedaling a bicycle. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Takes a little work. So, oh. Trying to read the music and then if you're singing and then you're trying to pedal and it's like. I don't know yeah. how somebody would do that. <laughs> in fact, all the furnishing in here has been donated along with the clothing. It'd be pretty boring if we. <laughs> have empty rooms to walk through, so you can walk around upstairs and get a feel how, how tight and close it is. I mean, you figure three strangers sharing a room that don't know each other, and yeah. Mm. And 25 cents paid for your spot in the bed. <laughs> you sleep crossways, share the chamber pots and the water, and you can go upstairs too if you want to. Okay. We have just there. traversed up the steps here to see what's up here. Got a little tiny bed. For probably some kids, and then here's an actual bedroom over here. This is clothing worn by William Reed, Laura's school teacher. Not a whole lot of room up in these places. Walls kind of slant down. Look, they've got a picture over here. Little place to sit down and read, and a lantern for some light. This looks like a baby's room. They have a crib set up in here. My Quiet Book. And then a model of a log cabin. This one looks, if you see my other Laura Ingalls Wilder birth home, this is kind of just how that cabin is set up. So I wonder if this is that one, because that's pretty much exactly how it looks on the inside. There'll be a link to that video in the description below. And here's another bedroom, it looks like, for the kids. And back in the day, boys used to take pictures in their dresses. <laughs> Way back in the day. <laughs> and there's a couple of them right there. And then here's the other bedroom. Looks like they're ready to pack. This is how people would have slept, like three to a bed. They sleep widthwise like that, and they can fit more people on there, and it would be 25 cents per person. <laughs> and they would allow no more than three to a bed. I don't think this would be my style of sleeping, <laughs> but back in those times, you had to do what you had to do. Now we have traversed downstairs. It's a lot more roomy down here. <clears throat> Got a place for games, some checkers set up, some... Little Here's blackboards Everything, uh, food, and a dining room table. And if you're wondering what's on the menu tonight, the dinner is roast pork, creamed corn, mashed potatoes, sourdough biscuits, custard pie, and for supper, rice soup, cornbread, stewed fruit. <laughs> Laura's virtues have courage in danger. And then right beneath that is a butter churn and all sorts of different dishes and pots and pans. Carrot scrapers, that's what that is, it's a carrot scraper. Wooden butter spade. Here's a little tool shed with a hand corn planter. Carpenter's hand auger right here. This is a, a wire stretcher. Oh my gosh, smooth plane, <laughs> a guy working, <laughs> a porcelain guy, and even a street lamp. And there's nothing better than a good old-fashioned meat grinder. 
<laughs> Attached right to the table, how convenient. This bell belonged to the church that Ma and Pa joined. Oh, hard. You got really And that is loud. <laughs> that is very, very loud. And here's a closer look at that covered wagon from back in the day. And it says Burr Oak, Iowa, which is where we are. And this would have been a military style wagon from back then. And of course I can't leave here without giving the bell a good ring. <laughs> a good ring for good luck. <laughs> so let's give it a Unbelievably loud. <laughs> well, you guys, this has been another successful adventure here today in Burr Oak, Iowa. And this is a short time home of Laura Ingalls Wilder, which was a hotel that they stayed in three to a bed. <laughs> this is just such a cool little find here today, and I'm so glad I got a chance to stop by. And if you guys liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. While you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. Thank you so much for the support that you've given me so far, and until next time, I hope to catch you on the flip side.